else? Yes. You're, you're a, they're clients and so forth. I mean, they're emotions and so forth. How much does that guide you in what you're doing? So forth? I mean, you, you've got something that's extremely emotional. You, you handle things differently, but everybody does it different. I'm very strong. I'm the kind of guy that I'm not wimpy with my clients. Let's say my client's very emotional. I will sit them down, and I will tell them the way it really is. And I will say, listen, Jane, I know you're emotional, or Jim, I know you're, but here's the bottom line. If we go forward on this, um, we're going to lose. The judge is going to dismiss this case because of X, Y, Z. I can get you $10,000 now. It's going to be painful, boom, boom, boom. It is very rare for a client not to follow my advice. It happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. But when you're dealing with somebody with emotion, that's when you as the lawyer or the business negotiator has to stay focused on the deal. Pet peeve of mine in football, head coaches that lose their freaking mind on the sidelines. The head coach should be the person who's got it in, under control when all else is falling by. Marvin Lewis, when Marvin Lewis doesn't call a timeout, when he ought to call a timeout. You know, uh, I witnessed this at Simon Kenton's game against Ryle. My son's a senior football player. Overtime, we get the ball first, fourth and five. The head football coach of Simon Kenton went for it on fourth and five instead of kicking a field goal and then seeing if they can keep Ryle out of the end zone with a good defense. Guess what? We didn't make it on fourth and five. Ryle kicked the field goal because we kept him out of the end zone. It would have been double overtime. Losing your head. You know, you got to stay calm. You, you know, you, you have to make good decisions. You cannot panic. I can tell you right now, I call it learning how to dance. I have walked in a courtroom. I have never been afraid. I mean, I don't care. Even, I can, this is embarrassing. I could try a case that I don't even know. <laughs> I've done it so many times. Yes. Have you uh, ever made assumptions based on your fear or what you're thinking of your Yes. Yes. It, 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 it can be devastating. You assume, you assume X, Y, Z, and you know, I don't assume you make an ass out of you and me if you assume that great movie, uh, that old movie with Michael Keaton in it. What was that called? Night Shift, <laughs> where they ran a prostitution ring out of a mortuary. <laughs> it was a funny movie. But, yeah, I mean, you, you got to be careful about making assumptions. Let me tell you something I've learned as a lawyer and judges here. It's amazing how things on the surface think you think X, Y, Z, and then you find out totally different. Look at the assumptions that were made by the Bengal fans when they saw Pac-Man Jones in handcuffs. It's all over the Internet. People taking pictures. Pac-Man Jones got arrested. And look, Pac-Man Jones was a victim, for once, of a terrible, you know what I'm saying? People make assumptions, and it, 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 can, it can bite you. Yes, that was our question. No. No. I can't. Let me give you an example. I can't take a case where somebody is, I think, is guilty of pedophile, rape. I can't do it. Especially like you said, um, uh, police, you know, misconduct and stuff. Like things like that are kind of on the line. No. I, if police officers know, and this is, this is the, I can't tell you the number of cases that I turn down when they come to me and they're all mad about the player. They send me an email, and I'm saying, the guy didn't do anything wrong. Police officer didn't do anything wrong. I call them as I see them. Um, I have never, ever taken a case that I didn't believe one of two things. A, that we were in the right and deserved to win. Or B, um, I wanted to uh, lessen the circumstances for the person. In other words, some, like, for example, if you represent somebody who's guilty, I like representing two kinds of people. One that is innocent. I love representing innocent people. That is powerful. Two, they're guilty, but they just want mercy. Like the preacher that ran over, drank 18 beers as a truck driver and ran over and killed the Pendleton County prosecutor. I took that case because I felt sorry for him and his family. I felt sorry for the other family, too. We didn't stand in front of the jury and say, find him not guilty. We said, have some mercy. Um, and by the way, let me tell you something else, too. We find out sometimes after you've, see, you don't, all, in, a, in law, in business, the same thing. You don't always know the other side of the story. For example, I have filed cases against police officers where I've written a letter to the police department, and I'll say, my client says X, Y, Z. What's your response? They don't respond to you. 
You give them an opportunity. If somebody writes me a letter and they say, we're getting ready to sue you, I defend myself. So then you file the lawsuit. Sometimes it's a doctor, police officer. After you take their deposition, their sworn statement, you find out that it's not a case. What do you do? You dismiss it. And that happens a lot. There are some times when you think a police officer or did something wrong or a doctor screwed up, and you get into it and you realize they didn't. Um, you, I take them as I see them. Anything else? Remember Al Capone's quote. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you a ton. Thank you. Appreciate Elaine it. Elaine has something for you from from, from one Val Kilmer Doc Holiday fan. Here in the yes. Room. That is one of my favorite lines. I it's a great story. movie. Here we go. College of Business, NKU Penn. Thank you. Sure. God bless you all. Uh, okay. Anytime, Lou. Uh, you got it.